Welcome to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Sweats, and we are live from the Grand Champions Polo Club. I'd like to thank all the players for uh, their courtesy and patience as we wait to get ready for our second game of the day. Gaston, we're ready to go. So you go ahead and throw it in, and I'll announce the players. We have two great teams playing here in the Just for the Love of It Tournament 2024 Audi. They're going to be in the white jerseys today. Audi will play with Mark Ganzi at the number one, Santos Bellini, Tato at the number two, Sugar Erskine at the number three, and Fred, Freddie Mannix at the number four position. Now, they might have switched that up. Let me check. Because sometimes Fred plays the number three, and I think he did on Friday, so we'll check that out. They might put... Uh, We'll check and see. They switch it up. I think Tato's going to play the number four probably. And it looks like, yeah, Santos is going to play the number four today. And that'll put Fred at the number three and Sugar at the number two and Mark at the number one. Santa Rita in the beautiful pink jerseys. And they are going to play with Rebecca Cohen playing the number one. Rebecca's had a great spring season. Jason Crowder will play the number two. Pablo Spinacci will play the number three. And Juan Bellini Sr. will play the four. Juan Bellini, of course, the father of Santos Bellini. And here come Tato. Santos trying to get himself around. Spinacci. And I do apologize. Looks like uh, looks like they're going to switch it up and put uh, Pablo at the, no, he is going to play the number three. So Juan will play the four. Pop will play the three. So Mark will get his first touch of the day. Mark Ganzi. And he's going to work this one into the corner. Gets taken out around the corner by Pablo. They leave it now for Bellini. And it's going to be Spinacci on the far side. Six chuckers of polo here for our final game of the day. Congratulations to Newport. Newport getting the three-peat. And winning their third tournament of the spring, the 2024 Eastern Challenge. And it was a great game. The second half, there were only three goals scored. Two by the Sebi Lion team and one by the Newport team that actually won by Nick Rodan. It's going to be Mark Ganzi. Mark's got control here. Kind of spin around a little bit. Gets caught on the pony. Good read here by Mannix. Fred's going to get control. He's got, oh, Cobra going forward here, and Mark's got time. Nice pass by Mannix. Santos going to take out the man. Mark gets the first shot coming in from left to right. Here comes Ganzi. There's the approach. Look for the finish. And there's the high flag and power polo at its finest as Fred Mannix gets the Snoop Doggy Dog on the steal from Bellini and then turns it around and fires it as quick as possible to Ganzi and Mark with a stellar run and a great finish by the Cobra. Good polo. This team got edged out. Both of these teams got edged out on, on Friday, and that's why I said the teams are so evenly matched this week. A lot of fun. The polo, you didn't get to watch the Friday games. And uh, every game's the final because you need to get the, you need to win to move on. So on the bowling, picked up there and won by the Audi team. Turned around and controlled by Santa Rita. Backed up by Ganzi. Controlled now by oh, looks like Mannix. Oh, I'm sorry. Looked like uh, they all came together. Sugar. And he's going to get caught on the reaching call. So they'll move that ball to center. And we'll have a penalty 5B on the reaching call. Remember the uh, Santa Rita team with Rebecca Cohen. And Rebecca, I've been talking a lot about Rebecca being, uh, we're going to get a courtesy change here. It's going to be uh, by one of our Polo School graduates. And Rebecca has done a fantastic job. i got to tell you, she has raised her level so quickly and uh, from last year to now and uh, been having a great time 
And uh, she started out playing in the polo school. Then she went to the uh, Sunset Chuckers and Cocktails, where we have a lot of fun. A lot of our polo school players play there. It's a lot of fun. It's more of a slower kind of, uh, you know, get-together fun game where pro players come out and play with some of our novice players. And, uh, of course, it's at the Sunset every Tuesday. And that was a big, big hit this year. Uh, Yan Eddick Frank was live on the mic, and uh, I broadcasted everything from the CTV Sports Studios. And But that's a lot of fun, and you can do that if you uh, join the Polo On Demand program. You can, um, you can ask to uh, make that a part of your polo experience, the Sunset Chuckers and Cocktails. So make sure you uh, put that on your list, because when you do the Polo On Demand program it's exactly the way it sounds you demand it and you get it so you want to have all those little different polo experiences on your list and the sunset cocktails and chuckers uh is, is just one of those times sunset chuckers and cocktails you want to put that in a lot of fun you play on field one and you get a great crowd comes out and it's catered to such a high level, I got to tell you, the catering this year was spectacular. It was it was a lot of fun, and uh, all the people that bow, they always have a specialty drink if you uh, like adult adult beverages. Uh, but if not, of course, they serve all types of different beverages, and um, they have a fun polo game. Usually, sometimes a couple different games. So, here we go, everybody, back in the saddle after our courtesy change. And shot on goal by Santa Rita, but that ball is going to go just wide. And we'll set up for a knock-in for Audi. 1-0 to zero here in our first chucker play. We will be talking about the Answer Valley Polo Club today. That's something we're going to do every day and every chucker. As we are preparing for the summer, people have been asking us about the Answer Valley Polo Club. So we said, well, we'll give you as much information as possible. To kind of give you a taste of one of the most interesting and high-level polo summer destinations in the world. On the turn, on the take, it's going to be picked up by Fred Mannix. They all come together. Jason now, Crowder, he'll leave that one behind. Nice play by Spinacci. Bellini looking for Rebecca Cohen. Everybody gets involved in the sword fight, turned around and taken out by Sugar or Mannix. It looks like Sugar. Sugar's going to find Santos. Santos, oh, that's a pretty pass. And look at this, Mark Gansey going forward. Mark, full speed. What a pickup. Gansey with the approach. Gansey with the finish. Yeah, and the Cobra's going to strike, and that's a beautiful pass by Santos Bellini. Well done, Tato. Perfect pass, and that gave Mark the opportunity to drop the hammer. Nothing that Guan Bellini Sr. could do there but just play the center. Power polo at its finest for Team Audi. Back to the center. And we will switch directions, of course, for any of you new viewers, the procedure used in the game of polo. Turn around and control now. Very similar to a jump ball in basketball, if you're a basketball fan, the bowling. And, of course, the face-off, if you're a hockey fan. In soccer, I don't believe they have anything similar to that. And in football, I guess they have a set play every 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 play. But and uh, some of the basketball and hockey, he's very similar. Big ball by Fred Mannix, and he's looking for Santos Bellini. Good pickup though by Crowder. Jason, he'll turn it around here. Crowder, gonna take his time. Work it back to the inside. Leave it now for Bellini. We're going to click down under a minute here in the first chucker. Now the big pass down the center, but Mark Gansey on a flyer. I mean, this mare can run. 
And Mark Ganzi is riding today. There's a shot on goal by Crowder. And just wide to the left. And that'll end our first chucker play. So 2-0. to zero. We'll be right back for our second chucker. Stay with us. Have an opportunity. Santo Bellini gonna fire one from 60. Oh! Off the post. Welcome back to CTV Sports, everybody. I'm Dale Schwetz, and we are live from the Grand Champion Polo Club, field number two, stadium field, for the Just for the Love of It 2024. Second game of the day here, our final game for today here in our spring season. We have uh, Audi, if you just join us, in the white jerseys, Mark Ganzi, Sugar Skid, Fred Mannix, and, and Santos Bellini. And uh, we had one goal. As we had two goals. And uh, some great goals there by the Audi team. And then Santa Rita with Rebecca Cohen, Jason Crowder, Pablo Spinacci, and Juan Bellini. And uh, these are the two teams that were runner runners up on Friday in our. Uh, spring season for the 2024 Eastern Challenge. And here comes Mark Ganzi right in front of us. Mark has control. Going to take his time here. Nice little outlet pass. Looking for Mannix. Well done, Ganzi. And there's the give and go. As Fred's going to snap that ball all the way across the field. Remember the polo field, 160 yards wide. So why actually... Uh, wider and longer than a football field. And uh, a lot of people can't believe that when they come to a game and are looking at it uh, from the field as a uh, football field looks so much larger uh, when you when you look at it. But it is actually smaller than the width of a polo field, polo field being 300 yards long and uh, 150 from center to goal. So you can use that ball. You can use that ball going across the field pretty hard. You can hit hard and have a full run and gun and play right there like Mannix was. We get a penalty right here on a right-of-way violation, a blocking foul. And they'll drop that ball from the spot. And so this will be a possession play in favor of Team Audi. Six minutes on the clock. It's going to be Gansey. 
Mark, working it well. Mark, to the left side. Picked up nicely here by Bellini. Santos going for the tail shot. That ball's got eyes. Oh, off the line as his father is going to be laughing a little bit at dinner tonight. What a shot there by Santos Bellini. But his father, Juan, steals that ball off of the doorstep. Two perfect plays. I mean, a perfect uh, shot by, by young Santos. And then... A great defensive save by his dad. Uh-oh, trouble in paradise. His Juan's going to overskip, and now it's going to be Tato. Santos, nice pick up here. Tato taking it down the line. Shot on goal. That ball's going to stay on the field, I believe. And no, just wide, but Santos making great connection to the ball here in the first two chuckers. Not used to seeing Santos play the number four position, but he's done a great job playing the number four. Great back shot here by Mannix. That ball might go on its own. Wow, Audi, White, Pepper, and the South goal at the moment. They are controlling the pace of this just for the love of it final. Turn around quickly. Fred not wasting any time. He's got Mark going forward. Bellini's got to go back. Gansey with the approach. Mark with the finish. And, yes, the high flag once again. And Mark Gansey has it dialed in. Going to goal. Great shooting there by Gansey. And that will make it 3-0. to zero. It might get a courtesy change here. All right, so we're going to get everybody off to go off for a courtesy change. And uh, while we go off here, we'll talk about the Aspen Valley Polo Club. The uh, It's a friendly, uh, as you said, a family-friendly club. And there's a number of different places. We have, of course, the McClure River Ranch, which is a part of the club. And I uh, talked about this, the vision for uh, the community, uh, Mark and Melissa. It was all about uh, the vision for the community with Mark and Melissa Gansey when they resurrected the Polo Club in 2014. And since then, Polo has uh, increased in popularity in Aspen and uh, the surrounding cities. Uh, with And i got to tell you, uh, being out there, um, it has increased to such a level. I mean, I hear everywhere I go, and I spent time all over the valley from Glenwood Springs up to Aspen. And uh, in between, you have, of course, Carbondale, where the club sits. You have Basalt. You have Emma. You have all these other little towns that are in the area. And uh, it's amazing how, the, the, how supportive. I mean, last year, they were, they were stacked three, four cars deep on the sidelines with tailgate parties and just everyone. But that area also is a very strong horse community. They embrace the four-legged athlete. The, um, you know, with the various uh, weekly grass tournaments and, and then, uh, you know, we have the arena sados and we'll talk more about it. But the club has um, a lot of different events going on. Here we go as we get everybody back from the courtesy change and shot on goal, but that ball is going to go just wide to the right. Sorry, we'll get a knock in by Juan Bellini as we click down to three minutes right now. So three minutes on the clock and... Do we get a whistle there? Yeah, I think we are going to get a whistle there. So, foul against the Santa Rita team there. They turned around on the ball. Bellini brings the knock in, and that ball passes Spinacci on the left. It actually goes under his horse's legs, and then he turns around 
in front of Mannix and makes a hook, and that's a no-no. So you'll get a penalty 5A from the spot from about 100, maybe 120 out by the boards. It's going to be Mark Ganzi to do the honors here. See if Mark goes for the one-timer or if he decides to dribble this ball in. 2.57 on the clock at the moment. Mark. Sneaking by everybody, Ganzi. Will that ball make it? And Santos has to go near side, but he makes a neutral play. Backed up cleanly by Crowder. And then the shot on goal by Mannix, but just off to the left. So, not getting coming once again for Bellini. Audi, again, keeping the ball on their offensive Side, shooting at the goal, keeping the pressure on the Santa Rita team. Picked up here by Santos. Bounces off the pony there. Picked up and controlled. Going to be Crowder. Jason. Big ball down the center. Look at this. Rebecca Cohen. And Rebecca, man, she has picked up her pace. And she likes the uh, speed and action of the game on the move turn around here nice little play by fred mannix hang on there freddy hang on oh yeah good riding by mannix as he gets up on the handlebars but no problem now it's going to be rebecca cohen good pickup overrides picked up again by crowder jason with the approach shot look for the finish by rebecca cohen gets a piece of it they leave it for spinacci and Pablo gets the high flag, yeah. And that will make it 3-1. to one. So we'll get back to the center. It will be uh, under a minute when we get back for this second shucker. Some clouds blowing in. We do have rain coming this afternoon, such as the summer months in Florida. Yeah, we're getting a big uh, hurrah for that. We need a little rain, much needed rain, we could say, right? And uh, summer months, of course, it does rain in the afternoon, usually. That is part of the uh, summer calendar. So we get our game done before, and away we go. Picked up here now by Spinacci. We're under a minute with 40 seconds left. Pablo looking for Crowder, Jason. And the high flag. And well done, Jason Crowder. That should end our second chucker play. Yep, there's your 30-second horn. We'll get everybody on some fresh ponies. We'll be back. This is Just for the Love at CTV Sports.
And welcome back, everybody, as we get ready here for our third checker of play. Just for the love of it, Mark Gandy scoring all three goals for the Audi team. And uh, two goals scored by the Santarita team, making it 3-2 to two here. In this final final, look at this shot right here. What a goal, making it four to two. And that's the way you start out a chucker. And it's going to be Mark Gansey gets the pass, and Mark just got it dialed in here. Gansey <clears throat> coming off another sensational World Polo League season, Mark, 2024. So he loves the speed, loves the pace, and um, he'll be getting ready to play in uh, Aspen this summer. But he loves to get out in front and pull his team. He actually played a lot of defense this year um, in his uh, his um, his team for Team Audi this year. Sometimes it happens like that where you're playing a lot of uh, the defensive side of the coin. But Mark had no problem with that as he pulled what he's pulling the team. And uh, But his, his, uh, he's very strong at that number one position. But it was good to see him. Now Rebecca Cohen. Oh, off to the side. And they've had some opportunities here. And the Audi Santarita team. We have one more week left here. Here comes Mark. Gansey, nice play, Mark. He's got room to work. Look at his bay pony. Gansey, another big ball. That ball is going to go down in the corner. Will it stay on the field as Mark gets down there, turns it around, stolen away by Spinacci. But it just shows you how far that ball will travel. Mark swung so easy at that ball from about center field. It landed at the goal. I mean, down on the goal line. Turn around quickly and controlled by Bellini. Back shot looking for Spinacci. Stolen away. Santos and Tato. And we'll get a whistle on the play there. It's a little bad luck as Santos went to meet that ball. And if he would have got that ball, Meta, he would have been okay. But when he turned it and he missed it, and when he went back for it, that's where the whistle comes. So you got to make sure you just got to be careful of that play right there sometimes when you miss the ball. In polo, there's a few plays that when you do miss it, it can hurt you, go against you. And uh, so you got to gotta give it up. But when you do give it up, it usually gives a goal up. So they're going to put them on the line here at a 60-yard penalty four in favor of Santa Rita. And we'll see who they decide to give the stick to. Looks like uh, Spinacci. Dale, Palito. My brother. Pablo Spinacci, one of the top trainers at the Santa Rita breathing operation. Was a seven, eight goal player in his prime. Here goes Pablo. Oh, well hit, Pablo. Off to the side, though, but well hit. Good power. But just a little bit too far to the left. Line him up for a knock hit. And we will get it moving. Four to two here. Still, uh-oh, Mark. Gansey leans way back out of saddle there. Gets hooked by Spinacci. Pablo. Now a little bit of a battle here. And I like this with Santos and Mark <laughs> doing a good job working together there. There's the pass for Crowder. They need one, and wow, almost Fred Mannix, but Crowder, Jason, yep, going to get one. And that will be Jason's second one of the day. And more importantly, getting 
the equalizer. I'm sorry, make it a four to three. That'll send us off to our courtesy chain. I'd like to take this time, and I did this yesterday, but I love this little girl. I should call her, well, I love this lady now. I've known her since she was a little girl. But I'd like to give a big congratulations to Chase Newman, who's one of our family members. And um, she's been with the uh, Grand Champions Club, Polo Club, her and her mom, for many, many years. And uh, for graduating with her master's in marriage and family therapy. And I couldn't think of a better, better man, a better uh, master's to have working with our family. I, I got to tell you uh, here, Chase, you got to love that. And um, you always, uh, that's great. So congratulations, Chase. And, uh, and, uh, we give, we give much love and success for you um, in your career as she has her master's in marriage and family therapy. And she's been working very hard for many, many years here as one of our gold judges. And also, she rides and she plays and she knows more rules than a lot of the players, believe it or not. Because I've had the opportunity to work with her, her father was uh, one of the top umpires in the world. Her brother also plays polo. Her mother has been one of our top uh, managers running uh, the timekeeping and, of course, all of our uh, gold judges and a lot of the moving parts around the polo field. But congratulations, Chase, once again. We love you, darling, and uh, good luck with the rest of your career. Here we go. We got everybody back on the field, and very tight game here, Mark Ganzi. Oh, good pick up here, Gansey. Well done. On the move. Oh, that's a pretty bay mare, Mark Gansey. On the move. Cobra, what the approach shot. Look for the finish. Cobra. Oh! No! Oh, well done, no, Mark. What a run. Just off the post. And trust me, he is a good golfer. So, in some ways, that's not a bad shot to, to mark. Uh, but what a run. I love that marriage. You said Rebecca was sitting up here in the grandstand. I was thinking the same thing, Rebecca, when she ran by us. I love how she pins her ears back. She looks amazing. I love when the ponies start to run like that. Poetry in motion. Come on, Rebecca. Nice try, Rebecca. Gets a piece of that one. Controlled by Santos. Picked up by Freddie, backed up by Bellini, controlled by Jason, off to the races, Santa Rita, there's a nice pass, so who's going to get there, Santos, Tato, man, he's hitting the ball very, very well, whoa, Gandy's going to get around the corner, backed up by Bellini, got to give one play, smart play there by Gansey. had no play, had to give one up. Turn around here, Rebecca. Got Fred Mannix. Fred's got Mark downfield if he needs him. Fred, oh, a little short. Mark's got the weight on it. Nice try as he turned up the turn on it. Bellini, I love the bald-faced chestnut mare. Beautiful looking with that white face. Here come the Bellini boys. My favorite summer drink, Bellini to Bellini. And you're going to get the Bellini Bellini. And they're going to shut it down right there. As Papa Bellini is going to catch Tato on the right away violation. Good call. That ball going about 45 across. But you got to go for that one, Tato. You got to try, anyways. Because that's a speed play. And if he gets out in front of them a little bit quicker, then he, they're not going to blow the whistle. Juan doing a great job getting his horse turned and getting on the right of way, closing the window before Santos could get away with the ball. But you got to go for it sometimes. And most of the time, they're not going to move that ball. It's going to be a spot hit. So it really doesn't hurt you too bad. And even if they do move it, they probably are only going to move it to the center. So you got to go for that play. Big ball. Wow, that is a spectacular shot right there. And what a goal. That is the goal of the day. 
and what a shot. And that was Jason Crowder. Crowder, the spaceman, pulling the trigger and launching a ball right there. Well done, Jason. JC in the house. What a goal. Man. That is that's a third goal of the day, too. Jason getting his hat trick here. And getting the equalizer. Here we go. We're gonna finish up in our final. Almost got our 30 second horn coming. 33 seconds. 32. 31. Here we go. 30 seconds left here in our third checker play. Four to four. And it's gonna be a foot race. Spinacci Pablo on this little bay pony. Pablo. There's the approach shot. Well done, Santos. Good defense. Now Freddy. He's got time. Mannix is going to turn it back. Good little turn. Look at that. One tap and pound it. And, oh, well done. Crowder meets it on the near side. Now he's going to launch another one. And will that one go? Wow. I'm going to say Jason is out of his mind. Jason's going to say that ball's wide. Great sportsmanship there. He hit it very, very high. But that'll leave it there, 4-4. Four to four. So we'll send everybody off, and we'll have a short halftime. And uh, get yourself a snack. We'll be right back. Opportunity. Santos Bellini going to fire one from 60. Oh! Off the post. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, this is our second half of the Just for the Love of It. And, well, I, could, I, can exp uh, I can understand why they call it Just for the Love of It, because we have seen some spectacular goals. Mark Gansey with a couple amazing shots. Jason Crowder. What up, Jason? Just crushing the ball for like 130, 140. Mark scoring at like full speed and just letting them run. I love when they let the ponies just fly down the field. And uh, so a lot, a lot of fun. Wide open. Very uh, even game here. Four to four. And once again, we are talking about the Aspen Valley Polo Club. When I was talking about that uh, club, you know, not just with the uh, – the uh, polo, where we have the arena and the Asado Knights. We have the kids' polo. The kids get have a lot of opportunity to play there. They also have the wheelie polo. 
which is becoming a new sensation. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it in our courtesy chain because they also have the Chincana, which is a lot of fun, and that's uh, the kids really embrace that. And uh, this was one of the many plays and a lot of fun that happens at the Asset Valley Polo Club in the summer. On the move on the far side, picked up here and controlled by Gansey. He'll leave it for Fred, and this has worked out well. Mark and Fred playing the number one and three position. Sugar's in the middle, but Sugar's kind of been playing the defensive role, doing the clean, dirty work, and uh, Mark and Fred have been connecting very well on the passes. Crowder on a flyer. Rebecca. Oh, now, Rebecca. They're a little worried about you. Now, Rebecca, that is basically, and you know that uh, you're playing well when they start hooking you all the time there, and they get a good hook on her, and she's trying to break loose. So that actually is the compliment. And they're going to go ahead and move that ball. But it's going to go off the field. Quick knock in coming from Mannix. Fred going down the center with this one. And he is going to launch that ball. Now it gets picked up again by Crowder. Jason. He'll work it down the corner. Santos is going to press him here. Tato. They'll leave that ball for Manic. Now picked up by Spinacci. Shot on goal, Pablo. Not an easy shot. And wow, what a shot there by Fred Manic. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, but by Pablo Spinacci. Que golazo, Pablito. What a goal, Pablo Spinacci. That is a tough angle by Pablo. And we have seen some great goals here, mixing it up so well. So many different players love seeing that. Down the center, it's going to go through the backside. And it's going to be won by Bellini. And here comes Santa Rita. Santa Rita up by a goal here. Five to four now. And nip and tuck. Spinacci with two goals on the day. But that was, uh, his goal is a tough goal based on the angle of that play. On the move, on the turn, it's got to be above Fred. He'll leave it for Mark. Mark's going to shut it down. And you'll get a whistle on the play. That'll stop the clock with 4-12. 5-4. And we get some clouds that are blowing in here. Kind of cool it off a little bit, I think. Some, some, summertime. I almost said, where are you at? I said, my mom was in Colorado. So we're talking about the Aspen Valley Polo Club. Well, that's another good thing. Aspen is very cool. You are at 6,000 feet. We play from 6,000 to well, 10,000. Mark Ganzi. Mark. That ball go. Oh, Mark. Well, that put the pressure on him, Cobra, because three different players tried to stop that ball. So that ball was definitely hit well. And it started with Crowder. He tried to stab it out of the air. And then... Uh, Pablo tried to get it, and then Bellini finally hit it out of bounds, and we're going to have a safety. So penalty six on the play, and uh, they'll put Mark back on the line. A little bit of an angle here for Gansey, but it shouldn't be too drastic. Here comes Mark. Oh, there's a pretty ball right there, Mark Gansey. Oh, well hit, though. Very well hit. Needs to bring it over to the left a little bit. But that's the swing. That's the shot. Nice height over everybody's head and about 
75 yards. I was talking about Tincho Merlos, my man Tincho. He always hits the ball about 64 yards. And, of course, the penalty four and penalty six is 60 yards. But he hits them straight up and drops them right in. All right, we're going to click down to 325 on the clock. And control now by Bellini. Juan, he's got Rebecca out in front. Will it get there? Yeah, wait for it, Rebecca. Oh, bad luck. As it bounces off the pony, that one almost catches Crowder. Stolen away now by Santos. Oh, well done, Juan Bellini. You're not letting his son get away. Oh, Pablo. Now Mark. Mark will override. Spinacci will pick it up, take it back to the center. Pablo looking for Rebecca. Stolen away by Gansey. Mark. He'll take it off into the corner. Right there in front of the Boca Raton Club. And I used to work there when I was a kid. I actually uh, valeted cars there. And I also worked at the beach club. I was a great cabana boy. Did a great job there. I love that place. So if you get a chance, go down to the Boca Raton Club and check it out in the heart of Boca Raton. It is a magnificent place. Uh, fabulous design and, of course, culinary and just reputation is unbelievable. That's going to bring us to our courtesy change with 221 on the clock. And everybody will switch them up a little bit. Let's go back to Aspen. Uh, well, we were talking about a little Gincana, which I would like to see the tournament committee make the turn of Gincana into not just for the the juniors but actually make the professional players do the Gincana. That's what I'd like to see. You don't, everybody know what Gincana is? Okay. So if you don't know what Gincana is, that's where you do all kinds of different riding uh, with balancing, maybe a, an egg with a ball, well, an egg with a spoon. Uh, you might you take a, a ring and throw it around. Uh, it's just amazing. It's all these different horse events that you do riding a horse. Yeah, picking up things off. You got to lean way down out of the set. It's amazing. I mean, they got a full, full Gincana workout that is spectacular. Something, but the juniors do it. The young ladies and gentlemen. I want to see the pros do it. So, so I'm going to put that into into my. We do it in Aspen, and we've done it here. We've done it here too. We've done it. We did. They did a little bit here, but they do it really do it in, in Aspen. And it's a lot of fun. You can see it online. You can go online. Just go online and check out Gincana. You'll see. We filmed it all. We covered it all. Here we go. Everybody back on the field with 209. Back into the center. Crowder. Jason's going one. Getting it going here in this uh, second half of this game here. He started up in the third checker. And he is fired up. That ball is going to go just out of bounds. We'll have another knock in for Audi. Five to four, though. Santa Rita holding on. And they're going to spread it out here. And Mannix has been hitting the ball so deep. Now who's going to get there? Looks like Mark coming in hot. Here comes Gansey on the move. Mark Gansey. Look at that mare run. She's got her ears straight up in there. She is beautiful. What a beautiful baby. It's amazing how all the different mares, all the different horses could be a gelding. And also the, how they have different styles like people when they run. Some run straight up. Some run flatter. Some drop their heads. Some pick them up high. And, uh, but it's pretty cool to watch the way they different. Bit of an art form. That ball's going to skip out of bounds and we'll have a change of possession. So a cop on the pitch. And uh, just under a minute left here to four chucker mark with an opportunity he can dribble this ball if he wants yep he's got room to work now gansey's gonna take it all the way in mark shot on goal bounces off a pony turned around sword fight well done good job here 
by Sugar, Ersko, that's, I'm sorry, Freddie Mannix. And Freddie will get the high flag, and that is a sensational play by Fred Mannix. Actually leaning out, making the hook, and then reaching back and turning that ball and not getting caught on the reach and then getting the finish. And what a spectacular finish. All right, we're getting everybody on some fresh ponies, and we'll be right back for our fifth checker play. Playing in a dedicated women's polo league is great for progressing your polo. It's um, great for us to play together as women, to have a chance to take to the field with some of the best polo players in the world. Um, it's helping us come together, improve our polo, and keep up playing a regular high level of polo. Like, I'm learning so much. I am uh, shadowing some of the best women players um, in the sport, and it's just been an incredible journey, really. I have played at Santa Rita before and I love it here. It's a fantastic club. They do so much for, for not only just polo, but women's polo. So we're very excited to be here and you know, huge thanks to Melissa and Mark for, for having us. All right, welcome back, everybody. Here we go for our fifth chucker play. Five to five. And everybody back ready to go here. Good luck to both our teams. We'll get a quick bowl in, and away we go. All right, so on the bowl in here, Rebecca will get a piece of it. One by Crowder, Santos. They come together, Tato. Picked up there by Bellini. Backed up by, looks like Freddie. And controlled by Mark. Ganzi. Mark's going to work this one in now. One on one against Spinacci. Around the corner they come. Mark, good pick up here by Ganzi, trying to get by Bellini. Juan will take it back across the center, and it will be Crowder. Jason, Santos, good D. Bellini, and it will be Juan. Juan down the center. Wow, that ball, pretty pass here. And, uh-oh. On the line, and I think it gets, oh, and it will be picked up by Spinacci. So Pablo will finish that one off. It looked like he might stop that one. But a nice pass there by Juan Bellini to lay that ball in. And that will make it six to five. Spinazzi picking up his third goal of the day. And on the breakaway after the bowling, they get a good run here and another goal. And what a breakaway as Crowder gets that ball out in front, checks his shoulder three or four times, just keeps it out in front of Mannix and nothing he can do. And then he switches to the near side 
Now she bounces off the pony, but no problem there. Jason <clears throat> picks up goal number four. And look at this, a two-goal lead. On the bowling once again, controlled by Santarita. Winning a lot of bowlings here. Now it's going to be Juan Bellini. Juan trying to sneak around the far side on the Big Bay Pony. Works this one down. Look for the cut shot. Oh, that's a nice shot, Juan Bellini. Oh, off to the left side. But a nice try there by Juanito. And they'll work that one back. And keep the score seven to five on the knock in as we click down to four minutes and five seconds. Mark Ganzi now. Mark's got Santos out in front, but stolen away there by Spinacci and Bellini. Mark's got to give one play. <clears throat> Gives the one play. Now it's going to be Bellini. Juan from a standstill. Juan hitting it deep today. Looking for Crowder. Oh, wow, Jason Crowder. What a goal by Crowder. Not an easy goal at all. Crowder leaning way out on the near side. It's a great pass again by Bellini. Juan laid that ball right down on the far post. That ball almost went in on its own. Crowder reaches over on the near side, flips it in, and we go to our courtesy change and back to Aspen Valley. So we talked about Gincana, but you got to remember we have the Polo School also in the summer, Aspen Valley Polo Club, headed by former, well, right there, Juan Bellini, <clears throat> former eight-goal player Juan back in his day, now on three goals, and, of course, the Polo On Demand program, which is used a tremendous amount of time by different players at different levels, the Polo On Demand. And when I say that, different levels, because the Polo On Demand, you can actually just come for a sick and ball session or a workout, or you can set up to play in a league. So you can play in the high goal. If you have the ability, they will set you up with the necessary, with the horses that will play to that level. So there's all different levels of the Polo On Demand program, and that's why we call it one of the most, well, the most unique program around the world involved in the world of Polo because of all the different options you have. Everybody back on the field. Here we go. 3.15 on the clock. Sugar Man. Erskine. Oh, look at this shot by Sugar Erskine. Are you kidding me? Sugar. Whoa. That is a spectacular goal once again by Erskine. Sugar. You kidding me? Wow. Sugar Erskine. Near side neck shot. It gets finished by Fred Mannix, but Sugar. That is phenomenal. What a shot there. We've seen some brilliant goals here in this game from all kinds of different players. I mean, it's mixing it up, not just one player. We have seen just some spectacular goals. Mark Gansey said, you can do it, I can do better than you. Mark on the move. Gansey now, he's going to fire one from way out in the corner. This ball's got eyes. Taken off the doorstep, and everybody comes together, and Bellini cleans it up on the gray ponies. Now, Juan, once again, on Automatica, I believe. Big ball, looking for Rebecca. Well done, Rebecca. Keep it going. Oh, override, backed up cleanly by Sugar, looking for Freddy. Freddy's got... May got the Cobra. Mannix, can he get there? Oh, backed up cleanly by Crowder. Fred, 
Another tail shot. Well hit. Looking for Santos. Bellini. Oh, this ball's got eyes. Santos. Oh, which is off to the right. Man, they're smoking the ball here. Three gate goals, though. Bye. All of the teams here. We're going to click down to almost a minute. 105 on the clock. And it's going to be Mark Ganzi. Picked up here by Sugar. Sugar. Rebecca. Rebecca. Mark. Sugar. Now Erskine will run the turn. Got to deal with Spinacci. Well read by Ganzi. Mark. Mark's got time to work. Mark's going to work this one down the boards. Still's got control. Good pick up Ganzi to the center. Mark. Now Freddie off the pony. 30 seconds left here in the fifth. Spinacci's got Rebecca out in front. Pablo, there's the pass. Looking for Rebecca. Can Rebecca get there? 15 seconds on the clock. Cohen for the finish. Rebecca once. Rebecca twice. Oh, man, just wide to the left. So that will end our fifth chucker play. We'll see you for the sixth. Stay with us. We'll be right back. have an opportunity. Santos Bellini going to fire one from 60. Oh! Off the post. All right, everybody, here goes six and final chucker. Eight to six, Santa Rita in the lead. And, uh, wow, I want to thank both teams here. And uh, at this moment, also congratulate Newport for getting the three-peat. Wasn't sure if that was going to happen today with the uh, – Savvy Ball Lion team, they uh, they played very well. Here we go. Final chucker, two goal difference, and it was Audi controlling most of the shots. And then the Santa Rita team, they came alive in the fifth, scoring three goals. And that's where we stand right now. On the move right now, Mark trying to get through there and a whistle on the play. And you might get a cross hook here. 
look kind of interesting when a player does come over from the side and Mark had control and looked like one of the players kind of reached across and hooked him. He takes it on the offside on the back and yeah, they got to, oh, it's got to foul the second man also. So either or could be the cross hook or foul the second man. As yeah, we have replays up there, sir. If you like to watch them on that board right there, for some of our fans here, check out the replays. So foul the second man, open goal, penalty two. Be Mark Ganzi with the opportunity from the thirty yard mark. Here comes Mark. Cobra. No problem with the high flag, and that'll make it a one-goal game here, eight to seven, with uh, over six minutes left here in this final trucker. So very close match game here as we come back to the center. Good shooting there by Mark. Gansey will pick up his fifth goal of the day. And back to the center, we will go. Out on the breakaway. Oh, bad luck, but look at this. Crowder gets a piece of it. Now Spinacci, look for the deep neck shot. There it is right there. Oh, wide to the left. And well done by... The... Goal judge there. Very good job. Look at this ball. They got Mark Ganzi on the far side. Ganzi, what a shot here by Mark. On the move, gets a piece of it. Now Santos. And we're going to have a three on two coming. Bellini, if he can keep it moving. Oh, Santos comes around the corner. There's my favorite summer drink, the Bellini Bellini again. And look at this. On the move is going to be left there for Sugar. Look for the equalizer. Erskine wants. Erskine with the pump fake. And, man, that will scare you out of the way. And Erskine will get the equalizer, make it an 8-8. Eight to eight. Yeah, that is good polo. Well done, Santos. Winning the sword fight. Against his father, the two Bellinis going at it. That gave Fred Mannix the opportunity to find Sugar. And we're looking at 8-8 eight to eight here in the sixth trucker. So just for the love of it, Cup, turning into a great polo match. Now, Santos. Crowder. Oh, overridden by Sugar. Shot on goal. Spinacci, that ball has eyes. Will it carry? Oh, no. Just wide. Oh, man. That ball, I wasn't sure if it was going in or not, but it actually goes just wide. So, we are going to get our final courtesy change of the day, and uh, that courtesy change will... Well, here you go. This is what we saw in the finals. <clears throat> we saw it was uh, five to five, actually six to six, and everybody changed up and got on fresh ponies, and uh, we finished the game, and now we got eight to eight, and everybody will be on fresh ponies, and we'll get our final run, and perfect timing here. As we do, like he said, as the weather come, it's going to be a perfect time to finish up. And we will see who will take home the final cup here. As uh, this, is a, this is a coin flip. Fifth chucker was owned by the Santa Rita. And now... The six trucker seems to be owned by Audi. 
Once again, uh, my final notice here on Aspen. Make sure you uh, go to AspenValleyPoloClub.com, and you'll be able to get all your information for the summertime. All right, on the knocking. And there you go, Bellini. Juan with the one driver laying it inside the 60. Backed up. Crowder. Oh, across the goal mouth. Picked up here and controlled by Mannix. Fred. He'll have control. Oh, Crowder steals it away. Nice play by Jason. Turned around and controlled. Now they'll come together one more time, and Crowder's going to fire one. And look at it, Jason Crowder. Unbelievable. He has been firing the ball and through the goal from so many different angles. Goal number six for Jason. Crowder picking up his sixth goal and the go-ahead goal here with 240 on the clock. Incredible, Jason. Great job. Loose ball play. Crowder looking for Bellini. Stolen away by... Looked like he's going to be controlled there by Gansey, but picked up by Mannix. He's going to go back to Gansey. Mark on the Bay Pony has room to work here. Oh, he overrides. And turn around by Juan Bellini. We're going to clip down to two minutes on the clock. Hey, he's got Rebecca out in front. Cohen, Rebecca. Loose ball play gets turned around. Backed up by Jason. Met in there by Freddie Mannix. Look at Fred. Trying to get it down. Well done, Jason. Shot on goal, Santos. And, oh, just wide. And the clock is going to tick down to 130. Control by Santa Rita. Juan Bellini. We'll have the ball. Find Spinacci. Now Bellini going for the big ball for Crowder. Can he find him? Stolen away by the Sugar Man. Nice play by Spinacci. Backed up cleanly by Gansey. Mark. Now Juan. Bad luck is poor her Gaston Dorniak. Trying to get out of the way there. Poor Gaston. You all right, buddy? Looks like he's okay. So you might get a... Bowl in here. We will see. Oh, fair play bowl in. We'll see. He'll throw that one off the field. Get rid of that one. And you will get a bowling. So with 103 on the clock, here we go. Loose ball play. Picked up here by Mannix. Freddie. They got to give him one play. Fred Mannix now with the opportunity. Fred working it down. Mannix once, twice. Fred. And look at this. The equalizer as we click down. Nine to nine. And they'll come back to center. We'll see if they have a chance for one more bowling. Back to the center we go. They might have an opportunity at uh, one more. They're going to stop the clock with 33 seconds on the clock just to make sure all the ponies are okay. Looks like they are. So... Opportunity here if you can win the bowling and get the offensive attack. 
Here we go. Crowder, Santos, Tato Bellini in front. Loose ball play. Backed up by Audi. Looking for Crowder. 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 Looking for Spinacci. Well done, Jason. Landing on his feet. It's a good place to land. So it looks like Jason's all right. Put your hand together for Jason Crowder, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys. And Crowder's okay. So we'll go ahead and get this ball back in play now. now I don't know if that was a – that was going to be a fair – this going to be a, just a, a true bowling. So no fair play. Here it is, live ball to the backside. Mark Ganzi. Mark. Well done, Tato Bellini on the breakaway. Santos, he's got sugar out in front. Tato, as the clock kicks down, Santos, Freddy, loose ball play. And, oh, here comes Sugar. Shot on goal, buzzer beater. Oh. No, it was 20 seconds, two seconds. And there he goes, so... That'll end it right there, and I think they're probably going to keep this one at a tie. We'll have check with Mr. Newman. Mr. Newman, are we going to keep that one at a tie? They'll go ahead and check on that. It is just for the love of it. And it looks like all of our players are congratulating for each other. So, everybody, please put your hands together for both of our teams. What a game we had here. Thank you, everybody. Audi, Mark Ganzi, Sugar Erskin, Fred Mannix, and Santos Bellini. And uh, Mark had five goals on the day and then another two goals. And they mixed it up very, very well with Fred and getting their nine. And then on the other side, we had Santanito, Rebecca Cohen, Jason Crowder, Paul Spinacci, Juan Bellini. We had six goals by Crowder. And three goals by Pablo. That's how they got their nine goals. I want to thank Gaston Dorniak and Steve Lane, our two officials. Also, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out and also respecting and uh, taking care of the Grand Champions Polo Club. Congratulations to Newport, Gene Goldstein, Grant Gansey, Nick Rodan, and Tommy Collinwood for winning the 2024 Eastern Challenge. For Kale Newman, I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here. At CTV Sports, when I say thank you for making us the leaders in polo broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.